Okay, well, good morning and welcome. Uh, grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. It is good to have everybody here today and uh, we especially want to welcome any guests and visitors and first timers that we might have with us and I hope you feel especially welcome. And uh, we invite everybody to stick around after the service. We'll have a time of fellowship and we'll open up the mics and we can share uh, at that time. And let's see, is this working? Okay. Okay. And um, uh, we ask you to remain muted through the service, but to go ahead and join us in doing the liturgy, uh, particularly the uh, uh, bold italics parts, uh, but feel free to do as much as you like. We also have a couple hymns today, and so we uh, invite you to sing with gusto to the Lord. Um, we uh, have... For, for our music, we have Don on the piano, we have Mark on the organ, and Amy on flute on the hymns. So we're thankful for the musical offerings that we have today. I invite you to use the chat function here in the room to uh, send along comments uh, or praises or uh, affirmations or questions or prayer requests. And uh, just type us a note and uh, we'll try and get that included um, as we go along. And if not, then we will do so after the fact. So, all right, let's uh, go ahead and get started here. So we welcome you to this service of worship today. Okay. Uh, let's take a few deep breaths as we prepare for our worship. It is God who calls us together to worship. Even in a digital setting like this, God rules and God welcomes us into God's presence. And so let us open our hearts and our minds to all that God has in store for us today as we begin the liturgy this morning. Everything in it, the world and all its people belong to our God. For God laid the earth's foundations on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. 
The heavens declare the glory of God. The cosmos proclaims God's handiwork. The plants and trees show God's presence. Let us join with creation in praising God. Let us pray. God of creation, we give thanks for all the goodness of the earth that you made and sustain. Our voices join in praise with all creation, with the sea that roars, the trees that clap their hands, and the birds that sing in joy. Unite us by your Spirit, that we may be signs of your abundant mercy and live in thanksgiving for your grace. As we wait for the completion of your creation in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Please join us in our first hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks. O oh God, we thank Thee for this universe, our great home, for its vastness and its riches, and for the manifoldness of the life which teems upon it and of which we are part. We praise Thee for the arching sky and the blessed winds, for the driving clouds and the constellations on high. We praise Thee for the salt sea and the running water, for the everlasting hills, for the trees, for the grass under our feet. We thank thee for our senses by which we can see the splendor of the morning and hear the jubilant songs of love and smell the breath of springtime. Grant us, we pray thee, a heart wide open to all this joy and beauty and save our souls from being so steeped in care or so darkened by passion that we pass heedless and unseeing, when even the thorn bush by the wayside is aflame with the glory of God. Enlarge within us the sense of fellowship with all the living things, our little brothers, to whom thou hast given the earth as their home in common with us. We remember with shame that in the past we have exercised the high dominion of man with ruthless cruelty, so that the voice of the earth, which should have gone up to thee in song, has been a groan of travail. May we realize that they live not for us alone, but for themselves and for thee, and that they love the sweetness of life even as we, and serve thee in their place better than we in ours. When our use of this world is over and we make room for others, may we not leave anything ravished by our greed or spoiled by our ignorance, but may we hand on our common heritage fairer and sweeter through our use of it undiminished in fertility and joy, 
that so our bodies may return in peace to the great mother who nourished them, and our spirits may round the circle of a perfect life in thee. Amen. Beloved, since God has made peace with us through Jesus Christ, let us be at peace with one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace be with you all. <clears throat> Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, your word is a living word. By your spirit, awaken us, that we may see and hear your presence in the world and in the scripture that we read today. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our brother and guide. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals? that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. The second lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans from chapter 8, verses 18 through 25. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for, the, for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. May God bless to us this and every reading from Holy Scripture. And let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. All right. I have a little something I want to show you here, so... Okay, so this is one of my favorite people doing one of our least favorite things. Uh, this is uh, one of our, uh, our, yeah. Uh, 
This is Molly cutting the grass. And you can see that it has gotten a little long. Um, this was a, basically a, the first cutting. Now you'll notice over on the other side there that the neighbor's yard is very, very well kept there and, and short. And ours is not. We, we, every spring, as, as the grass starts to grow, our lawn tractor breaks down. Something happens. And uh, in this case, it was uh, the battery. Um, and uh, that was uh, followed by a flat tire. And that happens to us with great regularity about every season. And um, I suppose that we should anticipate this more and maybe start working on, on the tractor a little bit before we, uh, we get to that point, but um, uh, this, is, this is what we end up with. And so the grass gets long, and then we have to work all the harder, we, Molly, uh, and Jacob. Um, I, I try to avoid it because of grass allergies, and that's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But, um, uh, you know, mowing the yard, is a form of environmental stewardship. And um, it, in some ways, it's, it's a little bit of an artificial construct in that regard. And, you know, uh, we, we have these grass yards that, that we cultivate and, and uh, fertilize and seed so that the grass grows so that we can cut it and throw away the clippings. Um, you know, it's, it, doesn't make a lot of logical sense, perhaps, but that's that's kind of where we are. And um, uh, it, it's a, an act, though, of bringing order out of chaos, and that's part of what we are invited to do in the world, uh, in the scriptures. Right, so. Um, even though uh, we, it's our idea to make the grass grow, then it's our responsibility to try and keep it under control. And that's sort of what's, what's going on there. Um, now, this past week was the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, or the first 50th celebration of Earth Day. And, <clears throat> excuse me, Earth Day started in 1970, April 22nd, uh, when Senator Gaylord Nelson um, made it a thing. He, he started this idea of Earth Day because it, back in those days, there was no EPA, there was no Clean Air Act, there was no Clean Water Act, and it was possible for factories just to belch whatever they wanted to into the sky and dump whatever they wanted to into the rivers and, and streams. And there was nothing that could be done about it. There was no legal way of keeping them from poisoning the environment. So Gaylord Nelson started Earth Day. And that first Earth Day, uh, and this is according to the epa.gov website, 20 million Americans protested across the country for uh, uh, the government to take action in the environment. And Congress listened so that in December of that same year, 1970, Congress passed the uh, creation of the Environmental Protection Agency to deal with these sorts of problems. Um, I was seven years old at the time and going on eight. And nevertheless, I remember as a kid, the ecology movement getting started and people talking about how we needed to take care of the environment. And uh, I remember the commercials about littering or about pollution and about uh, clean air and clean water. And it was an important thing. It was, it was a, a movement that started. I mean, my dad tells stories about Pittsburgh near where I grew up, where uh, that before that, 
uh, businessmen would go home at noon to change their white shirts because they had become gray just in half a day of walking through the city uh, from the soot and, and from the pollution in the air. And so that was what needed to change. And that's what did change. So it was sort of the national equivalent of cutting the grass after not having done it for a long time, after having broken equipment and, and the grass grew up too high. Uh, and so with the start of, of that Earth Day and the start of the EPA, then we, we've made a lot of progress in cleaning up the air and water around us. Now, uh, the question I guess might be posed, why should Christians care about the environment? And there are some different views on this. There's a there's surprising amount of conflict in the Christian community about earth care. Um, and some people think that we shouldn't have to worry about it, that we should just use the environment, use the earth as we need to, because, hey, we're going to heaven, and we're not going to be here, and so what does it matter? And the Lord is going to return soon, and all of this will be gone, and either it will be destroyed and replaced with new heaven and new earth, or um, it will be perfected when the Lord comes. So why should we have to worry about it now? The other side of the coin is that we should conserve the environment, and we should protect it and do our best to uh, tend it and care for it because, well, there are others around us and others coming behind us, and we don't know when the Lord is going to come, and we don't know when our day is up, and so we should care for it because other people are going to need it. And, you know, it's... Uh, it, it's similar in some ways to the arguments we're hearing around how we should respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, well, we should stay home so that other people don't get sick, or I want my, I want my rights and, and I'm going to go out and, and do the thing, right? So uh, one of the things that we need to recognize in all of that is that there will, there will be people who may suffer if we make bad choices in either case. But apart from all of that, we can turn to the scriptures to see why we ought to care for the environment. And the first thing that we can say is we should care for it because God made it. It is God's possession and we have been given charge of it. So that's the second thing is that God has made us the stewards of the earth to care for it. And we see both of those uh, summarized in Psalm 8 that declares the glory of God and as seen in the creation and uh, names God as the maker of all these things. And that God has cared enough about us to put us in charge over all these things. And, you know, what are, who are we that God should be mindful of us, and yet God has put us over all of these living things to care for them? So, uh, and Psalm 8 is just really, like I said, a summary of a lot of different scriptures. Uh, it's kind of like um, if you look up, if you wanted to preach on the love of God, you'd have a hard time choosing a scripture. And the same thing here, there are so many scriptures that talk about God's creation and how uh, God has given it into our care. So Psalm 8 is a nice summary of that. Uh, but then we also can think about it in, in this way, that we should care about the earth and the environment because of Christ's resurrection. That when Jesus was raised from the dead, it opened the Messianic age. And we've talked about this the last couple of weeks, uh, that the, uh, in the ancient thinking, uh, the Messianic age, when the Messiah came, it was, people expected it to be a, a radical discontinuity from our current existence. 
and that things would change and improve and everything would be perfected. There would be justice and peace. There would be love and mercy and the reign of God would begin. And um, what seems to have happened is that God's way of doing it is that God has overlaid that messianic era on top of ours, uh, our ordinary life, so that they coincide, they, they live together at the, in the same space and time, rather than it being a radical discontinuity. So when Christ was raised from the dead, it was the inauguration of that messianic age, the age of the Messiah. But the age of humanity has continued nevertheless. Uh, that messianic age, though, heralds the renewal of creation. And we see in a number of scriptures in, uh, in the prophets and in the New Testament that the, uh, the coming of Messiah would lead to the restoration of all life. And so we find this in the passage from Romans 8, where it talks about the groaning of creation waiting for its redemption, just as we are, that we are longing for that day when we will be perfected. And so too, all of the earth is groaning, waiting for that day, and aware of it, and knowing that it is coming, hoping for it because we have seen that Christ is raised. And if Christ is raised, we shall be raised. And if we are raised, the earth will be raised up as well. And uh, so the passage that we read from Romans 8 points us to this idea that we should care about the creation, about the earth, because of Christ's resurrection. The beginning of the Messianic age. Now, in the 50 years since that first Earth Day, we've made a lot of progress, um, but we've also created some new challenges. You know, we've, we've done a lot better with air pollution and water pollution so that we, we don't have sooty skies and we don't have to worry quite so much about poisoned water. But at the same time, our use of, of uh, fossil fuels has continued to increase the carbon emissions uh, into the atmosphere, which is changing our climate. Uh, and we have uh, adopted more and more disposable plastic into our lifestyle, which is building up and just becomes waste. So that, you, you know, we, there's this island of waste plastic in the Pacific uh, in the Pacific Ocean, and that there's there's billions of particles of plastic throughout the environment, and it's the plastic is poisoning the environment, to say nothing of our own lives. So there are a lot of different ways that we still need to be at work, considering how to care for the environment and how to do it better. So it, it, the fact that we've made some progress but still have ways to go is like keeping the lawn mowed, but meanwhile the house is covered with poison ivy and the, the doors are covered with poison ivy. And if we think about it, most of our environmental issues come down to consumption, which, uh, you know, that we want to go places, we want to have convenience, we want to do all these things and have all these things, and and we don't care so much about the consequences. And so consumption comes down to greed and self-centeredness. You know, the effects of pollution and climate on the developing world and on communities of uh, people of color in particular far exceeds that of um, white middle-class America. And so the choices that we make about our consumption have impact on people right now around the world. And if, if all the rest weren't reason enough to be concerned about it, that ought to be something that we really should be thinking about, that our choices are impacting our brothers and sisters around the globe right now. 
Similarly, in 2,000 years of the Messianic age, we have made some progress, but we still have a long way to go and a lot of work to do. There is still greed and self-centeredness. There is still corruption, and there's still plenty of sin to go around. But there is also love, mercy, grace that has continued as at least an undercurrent through civilization for these 2,000 years. The gospel opens our hearts to get us past the fear that leads to the greed, that leads to the consumption, that leads to the destruction. When we trust in the resurrection of Christ and that it is our hope, then we don't need to be afraid of not having because the Lord provides even life in the midst of death. And so we need to take some time and consider how we are living. And I would suggest that um, we, we think with some of our uh, senior saints, some of our seasoned saints, about uh, how we live. You know, the previous generations were not quite as consumer-minded and were much better about the three R's of reusing, re <clears throat> reducing, and recycling. You know, and um, we can learn a lot from those sorts of behaviors. And consider just how much consumption has changed in the last six weeks since we've been in uh, quarantine. And think about your consumption of toilet paper. Uh, we're very much, we're very careful about our, our paper usage now, right? And we can do that with all of our resources. We can rethink how freely we dispose of the things that we make use of. So the scriptures call us and the resurrection call us to be environmental advocates for the sake of Jesus Christ as witnesses to the resurrection. So I'd invite you then to check your own consumption to see if there are ways that you can cut it down. You know, you can, uh, when we get back out into public and, and can use uh, the, the public square again and, and, uh, um, and even public restrooms, if we're still washing our hands, as we probably will be, uh, you know, you can, you can save an awful lot of paper towels by using one instead of using three or four. And if everybody did that, we would save hundreds of thousands of trees every year. And all you have to do is shake the water off your hands before you use a paper towel. Things like that. It's so simple. And in doing that, we can give thanks and praise to God in Jesus Christ. Right? So checking our consumption um, and inviting and challenging our friends and family to do the same and to become aware of the environmental issues and what the science is telling us about our consumption and how it affects the world. Uh, becoming aware of the tips and tricks uh, and the impacts of all of our consumption and how, how we can improve that, our stewardship of all these things. Uh, make use of business connections and, and think if there are ways that if you ha have any way of exercising authority in your business, are there ways that you can uh, bring it to bear on environmental usage uh, and environmental uh, uh, issues? And contact your state and, and federal representatives, asking them to be involved in caring for the environment as well. And we do all of these things not because we're liberals or because we're tree huggers, whether you are or not. We do it because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that calls us to live a different kind of life. And so I want to share with you what comes next in, uh, in the scriptures from Romans. 
it sounds like a lot of work that we're facing here, but the scriptures tell us the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. So you see, in here, we have the assurance that God's Spirit is working with us to lead us to the things that we need to do according to the will of God, and that we are called to be like Christ. And you know what comes next after this passage is the part where it says, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. So caring for the world, caring for the creation, caring for the environment is a way of expressing the victory of Jesus Christ over death. So, brothers and sisters, I invite you to rejoice and give thanks in the resurrection and to take part in this new messianic age by caring for the world in which we live, for our own sake, for the sake of those around us who are impacted by our choices, for the sake of the generations that are following us, and for the sake of Christ himself that we can give glory to God through him. Thanks be to God, who has given us such a gorgeous and beautiful world, and who invites us into its care and keeping, that we may honor him this day and forevermore. Amen. All right, let's do a little more singing the uh, the rest of this What you see here is our prayer wall, our prayer cross, and um, these are uh, post-it notes here that Connie and Alexander put up over at the church, and these are uh, the different prayer requests that we've had over the last couple of weeks, and so we're very glad um, to have that, and, and see, uh, here's a little closer look at all of these. And uh, the idea came from the uh, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Leesburg. They have a wall. We've got a cross. Uh, I, like, I like the cross. I think it's pretty neat. So thanks, Connie, for doing that, uh, and Alex. Um, so 
Let's see. Um, do we have some new prayer requests? Molly, can you, uh, do you have anything here that we need to throw in? Check the very first uh, chat, Check at the very top of the chat. Okay. So uh, for Nancy Peacock, uh, Carol Peacock's wife, um, and Carol is May Peacock's son. You may remember uh, all those folks. Uh, we'll certainly remember them in our prayers. Uh, Fred, uh, uh, Don's dad is doing better, so we are thankful for that. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, a loss for, for Julie, a, a friend who died of COVID um, that we learned about this morning. So uh, prayers there. And uh, Jonathan is out of quarantine and, and started on his mission. So that's, that's good news. Um, and Inga's mom discharged from the hospital, recovering at home. So that's good news too. Um, uh, Cynthia and Matt in New Jersey may have the COVID, um, so anyway, we'll uh, remember them. Go down to the bottom. More's coming. More are coming in at the bottom. Okay, there we go. Um, Allison's family and uh, Bill's aunt, Mickey Hay, in the ICU. So, okay, um, let us then, uh, you know, you can, you can keep bringing those in and um, uh, we will add them to the wall and we will add them to our prayers as we uh, make our way through here. So, um, let's turn our hearts and minds to the Lord now as we join in common prayer. Gracious and loving God, we do give you thanks for this day and for the beauty of the earth, uh, for the opportunity to be stewards. And we pray, Lord, that we would take the time to engage in the world, engage in nature. Uh, it's important for us to, to have a touch of earth and sky, to remind us of who we are and whose we are and our part in all of the world. It's easy for us to forget that we're part of a larger system when we're not touching the earth and not feeling the wind. So Lord, uh, remind us of your glory as we walk about and Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of Christ and his resurrection, for the call to faith that you have given us, and for the gift of the church, a community of people to join together uh, in supporting one another, in doing the works of your kingdom, and of proclaiming the good news that Christ is risen indeed. Uh, we thank you for these brothers and sisters who uh, help bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And we give you thanks, Lord, for the fellowship that we enjoy. And we thank you for your messages to us in the scriptures that lead us to faith, that lead us to action, that lead us to love and mercy, that lead us to worship. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for all of these things. We thank you and praise you for the resources that we have and for the opportunities that we enjoy. And we pray, most gracious God, that we will be good stewards of all that you have placed in our hands, of time, of talent, of treasure, of earth and sky, of our brothers and sisters, our siblings around the globe. Lord, we know that you hear our prayers when we gather, and so uh, we lift up all of these concerns before you, 
And we ask you to pour out your grace and your living spirit on all the folks whom we have named before you, for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for your comfort. For those who are sick, we pray for your healing touch. For those who are caring for the sick, we pray for your strength and courage and compassion. For our leaders, we pray for your wisdom. For those who are working in science and medicine, we pray for knowledge. For those who are struggling economically, we pray for resources. For the poor, the hungry, the homeless, and the outcast, we pray for compassion and sharing of resources. For those who are in prison, for those who are detained, we pray for your comfort. For those who are lost and struggling, we pray for your guidance. For those who are swallowed in sin, we pray for your forgiveness and grace. Lord, for all the concerns that we have named before you in our hearts, uh, on our walls, in our chat, we offer these to you. And we offer our own lives, for you know our fears, you know our hopes, you know our needs, and you know our resources and opportunities. Open our hearts that we may receive the blessings that you have for us. Open our hearts that we may hear the voice of the Spirit leading us. Open our hearts that we may know your glory and give you praise. Open our hearts that we may be the compassion of Christ in the world. All of these prayers we lift into your hands, trusting that you are working out your purposes in the world and that you are indeed bringing good to those who love you. And now we join our voices together to pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, beloved, we have opportunity to offer ourselves to the Lord. And so I'd invite you to open your hearts and minds to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he may be Lord and Savior in your life in a new way today. Be glad to talk with you about that and anything else that's going on in your life. Um, give me a call, drop me a note, uh, and I'd be glad to spend some time with you. Uh, we also take time to remember that we can offer ourselves and our gifts to the work and ministry of, of the church. And so if you are in a financial position where you are able, we'd invite you to remember your pledge or your gifts to the church. And uh, we, as we have in the past several weeks, we remind you that you have these opportunities uh, and ways that you can make your donations to the work of the church. Uh, and you can also help out with our collection for uh, Loudon Hunger Relief. We have the big blue box out on the front steps of the church, and we've invited the community to join in on that. And we also, uh, if you are uh, able to get out and uh, help with that, you can put some non-perishable stuff in the box, and we have uh, some folks who check that on a regular basis. Um, 
you can also give to Loudon Hunger Relief directly at their website or, uh, or give them a call and they will be glad to receive your gifts. So we wanna lift them up. They are doing some good work. We also have uh, the Western Loudoun uh, Food Bank and there's one in Luckett's as well at, uh, uh, at the Old Faith Chapel, I believe. Uh, so there are lots of opportunities to help with, uh, with food and many other things. If you yourself are in need of assistance, we'd like to hear from you too. Uh, if you need help with shopping or if you need something picked up or some errands run and you can't get out of the house, then be sure and uh, be in touch with me or one of the elders. We have quite a few folks who are willing to uh, help out with that kind of, that kind of work. Um, if you are lonely and need somebody to talk to, again, be in touch with us and we'll be glad to uh, spend some digital time with you at least, or uh, talk with you as, uh, as close as we are able within six feet. Uh, if you are in financial difficulty, we have a little bit of money that we can help you out with and some other resources that we can point you to. So uh, you can let us know about that as well. And uh, we have a new phone number specifically for uh, a helpline that you can call 571-293-6543. So I think that's uh, 571-AWE-6543. Uh, give us a call and we will help you as we are best able to do. So uh, let's... Praise the Lord for all that we have received with the doxology. things to keep in mind. We have our prayer meeting on Wednesday evening, same Zoom meeting that you're in right now. So six o'clock this Wednesday, you can uh, just come right back to this room, use the same links, same ID, same password, and uh, you'll get back in and we spend some time praying for all these folks that we've uh, been talking about and whatever else may come up. We're also planning to start a Bible study on the book of Revelation. So uh, starting in middle, uh, I think we said the 13th of May, we were going to start that. Um, it, it'll be half an hour Bible study and half an hour of prayers. And so uh, um, book of Revelation seems appropriate somehow this in these days. And so we hope that you can join us for that. If you would like to share your musical talents, we would love to have you do that. Uh, send a recording to Don and Mark, or um, uh, they will be glad to record with you if you want to do that. So there's some information. You can call Mark or email cpcspecialmusic at gmail.com. And uh, lots of other things going on in the life of the church. We're going to get confirmation going here again and uh, uh, get the inquirers class wrapped up again. So we'll have that going on um, and watch your email for other announcements about all the other ways that we are still doing the work and ministry of the church. So now I'd invite you to uh, uh, extend a hand of blessing to those who are around you that uh, as we, receive the benediction. So as you go out from this service of worship, be of good cheer. Render to no one evil for evil, but support the faint-hearted and help the suffering. Honor all people rejoicing in the love, mercy, and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever you do, be in prayer. And whomever you meet, treat them like a child of God. And whatever you say, breathe grace and peace, doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
place his cheek next to yours and give you peace, both this day and forevermore. And let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Amen.